Greens guys, this is Blights Rich, and this is designed to be a new player guide to low sec and factional warfare in the perspective of a Mimitar pilot. We will be joining the Tribal Liberation Force today and be flying mostly Mimitar ships. Uh, in one of the later stages of this guide, I'm going to ask you to f uh, train into a Thrasher. So be also training into Mimitar ships. This is great because like Thrasher is such a nice hull and it kind of allows you to get into the content, like say some public fleets or stuff in Min Mill. So a lot of the Mimitar fleets use Thrashers, frigates and stuff so they can easily get evolved. Um, and the Thrasher's really good at doing the kind of the plexes and stuff, which you probably don't know what plexes are at the moment, but don't worry, we'll go into more detail about plex mechanics, some of the lingo, and these kind of things. This guide will also cover how to transverse low sec semi safely. Um, there's always going to be an element of risk um, whilst traveling in low sec just because of the nature of low sec. Pretty much everyone in low sec out there to do some form of PvP kill you. Um, there is the occasional person who's just looking to do PvE and should be. Will be well leave you alone but most residents of low sec want to kill you <laughs> so it's um it's a interesting place it's a very niche place but i've always sort of lived in low sec and i really enjoy low sec it just has some differences to high sec and to null sec it's usually smaller operations like fleets of about 50 or you can do solo things a lot easier in a low sec so that's kind of what drags me towards it but yes we'll go from basically you starting out day one Getting into Thrasher, um, Plexing, and then converting your LP. Um, and we make about 150 mil in the first day, which is very nice, especially if you're just starting out. We, I also sort of teach you how to move your stuff around safe. Like, um, we're going to also make a hauler alt, or an industrial alt, as it's called. And um, he's going to move around our items, our LP bot items, just so you're safe. We'll go into more detail as to why that's a good thing to do. Um, but yeah. That's uh, pretty much the premise of this guide, my dudes. Um, let's get on to part one. Okay, so first and foremost, we're going to create a character. Um, just sort of read up on the bloodlines and like the races. Um, and decide which one you like the look of more, like lore-wise and the look of their like characters. Um, it has no bearing on whether you can join Tribal Liberation Force. Um, say if you create an Amar character, you will spawn in Amar, which is actually quite close to um, Mimitar space. But you can still join Mimitar like uh, FW. So don't worry so much about your character. Just choose one that you like the look of. Make them look decent. These kind of things. And I'm also going to ask you to. Down in the description and in the comment section. There will be a recruit a friend link. You want to click on this. Because once you start your character. Um, through following that link. You get 1 million skill points that you can redeem. And this is vital for this guide and it's just good for you starting out with 1 million skill points is amazing by the way that's, that's that's like a lot of training time especially as an alpha so you want to click on that get your 1 mil skill points i get something as well for each like person who goes through that recruit a friend link i get a little something nice so you're also um benefiting me too so thank you so much for that if you do go through that but yes uh, click that recruit a friend link get your 1 mil sp and then we create our character you're going to follow the tutorials and that should bring you to the career agents. There's three of these. Like I actually recommend you run all the tutorials. But if you sort of know what you're doing, I would need you to run three. The military, the advanced military, and the industry one. Um, once you do those, we'll have the necessary ships that we need. And a little bit of starting-esque to start on our little adventure. <laughs> okay, so after we completed those tutorial missions... We, I basically sold the frigates that we had in that hub that we were doing the missions, just didn't want to make two trips with all the ships. So even with the cargo exp expanders on this, we don't have enough space for taking the frigates as well, so I decided to take some of the modules and a thrasher. We'll be keeping this thrasher, we'll also be keeping this wreath. Um, it's unfortunate because this wreath's actually worth quite a bit, I think it's worth about a mil. Unfortunately, we're going to be keeping that. All these modules though, I'm going to dip out and we're going to sell all those, just so we have a little bit of starting cash. We also have uh, about 5 mil from completing those missions as well as what we will get from this, which will hopefully be a tidy little sum. We won't get too much. Heck, isn't unfortunately a great trade hub and some stuff might not be on able to sell here. Renz is considered the main trade hub for Mimitar, but Heck's kind of buried. You'll see, like, really, we're not getting much, like, good esque uh, <laughs> for these, but it's still worth selling for now. You could bring them to Jida or Mar, but that's a bit too much time that I'm not going to really 
spend here. These unfortunate don't have sale orders, so we have 7.5 mil at this point, which is good. And again, we're going to keep the reef and the thrasher. We'll keep this for something that I'm going to explain in the future. Okay, so now that we're in heck, um, sold all of our items and stuff, I'm going to get you a thrasher that we're going to use for doing the plexes and potentially some bell thrashing just to so get some esk and LP. This is going to be like basically offensive plexing is what I'm going to be covering soon. And that's basically how we're going to make all our income in uh, FW, at least at the start. Um, so this is basically the fit that I'm going to recommend you do. Um, here's the fit here, medium shield extender, uh, a compact MWD, uh, enduring multi spectrum shield hardener, and two gyro stabilizers, compact ones, and three field extenders. Then I just put 10,000 fusion here. Fusion's good ammo because uh, it's like good for the belt rats in Mimitar space, so we shoot angel rats, and they're basically going to be shooting explosive damage at those. Um, but unfortunately, you'll see that um, there's some red X's here, and you also see up here that um, we have like incomplete skills, right? So we can actually fly this. It says it'll take us four days. To actually fly, but since like we done the recruit a friend thing at the start, you should still have the one mil uh, unallocated skill points. You might have actually seen it down here. You might see like a wee redeem thing here. You want to go to that and redeem those one mil uh, skill points. It might have already just been on your character, but you should be able to redeem those if you go through recruit a friend. So what we're going to do with those is basically we're going to get these to the necessary skills we need. So shield upgrades mean four. Um, I'm going to apply some skill points there, just get up, I'm going to first do 10k, see where that brings us up to, which brings us up to, okay, so we still need a bit more, I'll tell you how much you need for each up next level, so we put an hour of 5,500 in there, and then I'd need one more level in this, which is 74, 5, 10, sweet, and that should be able to allow us to, I believe, fit this medium shield extender, which is sweet. Um, so we're also going to put Mimitar Frigate up. Oh no! We already have that currently training, so what we need to do is take those out of the skill queue. Just crack those out, and then we're going to put our SP into those. Da -da -da. We should do like 5k. And we'll see how much we need again for the final level. Which should be... Okay. 8,050. Sweet. So we got that sword, and then we, need, we don't actually have this skill yet, so what we're going to need to do is um do this and then you're going to need to click on this and then uh, buy skill it's only 130,000 isk buy that skill uh do not ask me again yes okay so that means we have a mimitar destroyer now and that's what we need to train to fly this thrasher which is a mimitar destroyer um so we're going to put some skill points into that we're going to do the necessarily 500 just to get be able to fly it but i'm also going to put some more levels into mimitar destroyer just because of the bonuses the thrasher has each level we put that up Mimitar Destroyer, it gets an extra 5% uh, damage to its guns and more tracking. We're really more concerned with the damage at this point, but tracking is also very nice. So I'm going to crack some more SP into that. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'll be down here somewhere. You sure? I'll be down here. Uh, da, da, da. Mimitar Destroyer, so we're going to get it to max level if possible. I'm going to quickly crack in 1k, 100k, and that should bring us. Oh, God damn it, okay. Fly, 70k. Sweep. So that takes us almost to the max level. And we're going to put another 20, 1, 0. No, oh, I messed up. Okay, we're going to get us to the max level. 18, what's that? Zero, zero, zero. Fantastic. So that means we're doing a lot more DPS in our Thrasher now. We just cracked the fusion on the go. We're doing 147 DPS, which isn't fantastic. It's good initially but we're going to do some more skills just to get that dps up a bit so we're going to go to gunnery and small projectile turret here you see that every level of this gives an additional five percent to our projectile damage and this is what mimitard ships usually use like projectiles or missiles but for now we're concerned with projectiles we're going to put some uh, skill points into this just put some key in it just now we'll try and get this to max maybe yeah yeah it will take a lot of sp to get this to max but it's definitely worth it so, um, if you get this to max, 750, and then we also have access now to, where is it, where is it, where is it? We should have access to the specialization skills, so we can actually use T2 um, autocannons now, which are very nice. They're a bit pricey, which I we won't be focusing on them just now, but they're definitely worth getting. So, we just need to, oh, you need motion projection as well. We'll put a bit of SP into that, actually. 
which is 13 once and one motion projection and gives you more tracking so that's also a really nice skill to have but um this is a skill you want um what's it called the small autocan specialization and we'll see just how much that is to buy it's two uh, 2.6 mil so it's a bit more of an expensive skill to have we will buy that um by skill, nice one. We'll just put some points into that. We're going to use T2 projectiles for this, but it's very nice to have access to T2 projectiles because they're very nice. It gives us access to hail, which is a T2 ammo that does a lot of DPS. So, but unfortunately, since this um character is alpha, you'll see there's some like what's it called um restrictions in place, right? You can only get this to three, you can't get it to five. You also can't get Mimitar Destroyer to V, which is very unfortunate, but it's nice to have that. You'll see that our DPS has also gone up a bit, and we're also going to get some more skills to sort of complement our guns here. You'll see the Surgical Strike. It uh, does 3% per skill level to, what's it called, damage. So we're going to put it up a little bit. We're going to put up a couple levels. I don't know how much. We might get it full, but we'll see. I'll give it another 50k. And how much does it get the final level? That's quite a lot. We might not do the final level there, but I'm going to try and maximize what we can do here. There's also rapid firing is a very nice one. That's 4% bonus to weapon rate of fire, which is really nice. I'll definitely increase our DPS. We're going to put a couple levels into this. DPS is basically what we're sort of focusing on because we aren't really going to be tanking too much, especially when we're in the plexes. Yeah, we'll do the final level of that, I think. Let's see what the DPS we're doing now. But 200, that's nice. That's a nice little level. Um, what else will we do? We could also do sharpshooter and motion projection. Again, more tracking and sharpshooter increases your range, right? That's to your optimal range. Um, you know what? I think we will do the final level of this. Uh, one, three, zero. Zero, two, zero. Knock your DPS up a little bit more, which is fantastic, boys. It's exactly what we want. So this is sorted to kind of... Just now you can keep that SP or you can sort of do what you want with it, right? You can maybe do some more like trajectory analysis for more uh, range. That's your fall off and sharpshooter or whatever. And you can also maybe train some other ships or something else that you maybe are concerned with. How much is it to this? You can also put this up to get an extra level. I think that's 2% to your damage. If you Oh, rate of fire actually. That's nice. Rate of fire is really nice. But I'm going to leave that for now. We'll leave these SP. You can do what you want with them. This should sort of function for what we need to do. Um, so yeah, we could also do some more like a shield skills to get a bit more EHP, right? Like shield management. It's like 5% to your shield capacity, which is basically all our tanks. So we might actually put it into there or something. But for now, this will do us nicely. This is the fit here again, just so you can need to copy it. And I'll also just show you the difference when we actually put T2 guns on it, right? So I'm going to take the, all these turrets off, the T1 turrets that we have. And fit those and i'm going to crack on some t2 and um, projectiles just to show you the difference if you can afford t2 projectiles you should go for it um you'll see we can we're able to fit them that's fantastic you see that the price goes up quite significantly then if we do this and use hail you'll see now we're doing 350 dps so that's like 150 dps more so if you can afford it you definitely want to go for the t2 projectiles it's really nice being able to load t2 projectiles yeah, it was very nice. So yes, uh, but this is the fit we're going to be using. You'll see, yeah, load this. Then we're doing about 215 DPS. So this should sort of do is what we're looking to do. Okay, so you've got your Thrasher, you've made your way from Heck to Dal, or you can enlist in Heck to the Mimitar Militia. I wouldn't recommend doing so though. You really want to be in low sec once you enlist. So we're going to enlist into FW and you're going to say goodbye to high sec. You probably won't be going to high sec too much with your new FW main. Or, yeah, you'll probably try and avoid high sec from now on, especially since you're enlisted in Factional Warfare. So we're going to do this. Uh, we're not going to go into this one. We're going to do Factional Warfare, and you're going to enlist. Of course, you don't need to enlist with uh, Mimitar Militia. I am very much biased. I've always been sort of comfortable in Mimitar Militia, but there's other militias you can join. There's the Amar Militia, Kildari Militia. Glanty militia. The only real difference is, is like basically Mimitar will be fighting Amar mostly in this war zone and up in Black Rise will be Kaldari fighting Galanti. Of course you can still sort of fight those kind of factions but you're basically sort of friendly with one of those factions. Mimitar is sort of friendly with K Galanti and Kaldari are sort of friendly with Amar. Not to say that these friendly people can still shoot you and you don't get too much 
what's it called? Negatives if they do so. So do be wary of like other like friendly faction members. So you can and some of them do potentially aggress you. Not all of them though, so it's, you need to be very careful. So we're gonna enlist. We're gonna enlist me. You're about to enlist as an individual to fight for the glorious Mimitar Republic. Indeed we are. So we're gonna click on this, join Mimitar Militia. And that's us. We're in Mimitar Militia. Mim Militia chat will pop up. You can't see how many members are in this currently, but there should be a bunch of people in here. You can say hi, maybe ask for a corp or just ask for some advice. But now we're in Mimitar Militia. And basically what this means is, we'll open that back up. Uh, rules of engagement. It'll show you some things here, like um, scan and capture faction warfare sites, and enemy space to contest opposing systems and gain loyalty points. Which loyalty points are what we're going to be using for our income? You can sort of see loyal point store here. You can sort of see like we can't buy anything yet because we don't have any loyalty points. But I'll basically show you what you sort of want to buy a site that's good for using to see what's the good items to buy. But there's loads of items here, and this can be kind of. Uh, what's called bewildering at the start, not knowing what to buy and what will get you the best returns in your L Eskin LP. So we'll go over that once you have a bit of LP. So now that you've enlisted, you're probably not going to go back to high second this character. Um, because enemy militia will camp your space, right? So say heck that we are in previously, that can be camped by a Mar militia. And um, it does say that you, if you're in enemy space whilst in the militia, you do get shot by what's called the faction rats or the faction police there's m multiple names for them but you'll constantly be peppered by them but they don't do substantial dps so you can stay on grid rep yourself or get some lodging on the go so the high six basically camp to this point you'd really don't want to go there that's why we're keeping the reef um i'm going to go quickly on to why we kept the reef just now Okay, so in that same account, you're going to create another character, and the purpose of this character is basically be a reef. Um, this is going to be your industrial character, your moving stuff for your character. Um, this is going to move all of the stuff in high sec for you. Like if you need ships, you're going to bring them close to a low sec system, bring your main in, get in the ship, and then like jump into uh, low sec. Or you're going to use it to move your LP bot items in um, high sec, right? Or move some items about for you, because you're not going to be doing that on your main. Now that you're in factional warfare, that's very dangerous, especially if you're in something as big as that industrial. Just because, again, the camping of your enemy a militia, which is what they do, they'll they probably end up killing you, especially in, like, like a high travel droughts. Especially if you're going up to, like, Jida or a Mart, you're probably going to lose that industrial. So you really want an out of um, FW character, right? A neutral character. You do still need to be worried about ganking. I'll go a bit more into detail and ganking and stuff and how to kind of try and avoid it. But yes, that's the purpose of this character. You should have that reef in hex. We use the on our main to move our items from the career agents to heck. We sold everything and we kept the reef and the thrasher. Um, that uh, reef you want to contract to this character and that's pretty much going to be his purpose. Okay guys, now we're in Camilla, which is quite an active system. Sort of allows me to show you guys how to descan. Descan will be your lifeblood in Eve, especially in low sec and null sec, where you're trying to avoid fights or find fights. But before we get into descan, I'm going to quickly get you a better overview in this one. This is a default overview, and it's not the greatest. So we're going to go to channels, go on chat channels, and then you're going to go onto this, a Sarashawa tack overview, right? So that's this Sarashawa overview. I'll put this in the description just so you. Get like the spellings and stuff you can see it here but just so it's easier for you you want to join this channel and it'll have some like steps and stuff but basically entails basically just clicking all these like i think this one first then go to part two part three and part four and then you basically got a cool new overview which looks awesome basically like uh basically i'll show you what basically what they are here basic travel this will be just like your gate it's probably some pv targets and stuff um normal pvp i'll show you probably pvp targets tidy doesn't have like like uh, citadels and stations on it. It does have stations, but not citadels, so it's a bit tidier. Uh, hostile logistics, I guess this is just you know, hostile lodgy ships, which are used for healing other people. Uh, salvage and loot, this is probably your wrecks and stuff, where the loot comes from. Basic PV, this will have your NPCs and stuff on it, and your belts and stuff, which is super cool. Uh, friendlies, that'll be like everyone in your fleet you'll be able to see, because when you join a fleet, you probably won't see them in this overview. So you'll need to go to the friendlies to see them. And warp is just celestials, like customs offices, like 
Astro belts and all these kind of things. So this is a really good overview. I should have maybe done this at the start. <laughs> but um, you really want to get comfortable with this overview because it's, it's, a, it's a godsend. So we're going to get that away. And then I'm going to show you how to descan, boys. This is a super easy once you get a hang of it. So you'll see this here. This is a good um, sort of visual identify or indicator as to what's happening. This bubble is basically our descan range. In the middle of it, imagine our ship, right? It shows like here, you are here. So... From here to here's 14 point, yeah, I don't know, I'll bring this over just so it makes it easier. 14.3 AU, that's a max like scan range. So from here to there, 14.3, from here to there, 14.3. Um, so everything in this cone, um, we can de-scan, right? And all these like little celestials inside, you'll see that like, say this, um, you can see when we hover over here, you'll see like it basically popping up. So you can see this small, it's like sort of over here. Um, let's go back on that again. You can sort of see it like pop up. You can always, actually, you only see the gates, but you can see that they're on D-scan range, right? So see if I put this to 5% angle, you'll see that that large ball basically comes to like a very thin point. So basically anything that you're looking at, like you'll see, you can move your D-scan around like this and it'll move. Basically wherever the middle of your screen is, is where this 5% angle is. So if I hit, uh, it's called control C. Uh, no, uh, I think it's Shift C. You'll see that um, I'm not panning anywhere, right? It's just staying where it is. But if I hit Shift C again, if I click on something, it immediately goes to it, right? So if I'm setting five percent D scan and I hit a small, and we keep at five percent, nice scan. You'll see that there's a coercer there. Now if I go over to say O height, nice scan there. There's probably not gonna be anything on this gate. There's just a star gate, right? So if I click again, it'll pan to the small, we scan. There's a coercer there. Now you can either decide to fight the coercer or run from the coercer. Since this Thrasher's kind of PvE fit and we're new, I kind of avoid all PvP at this point. Not trying to discourage you from giving it a bash, feel free to do so, but it's going to be hard for you, especially when starting out and then something that's more designed for PvE. Also, like, there's nothing in that medium, nothing in the open, right? And there's, but there's only the thing that's around is a coercer. We go to like a 360 scan, you can also see the other kind of things that are out and about. You'll see these NPC retrievers, they aren't really too much of a concern. I'm going to change uh, to ships only here. And you'll see all the ships are in space, right? There's an Ishtar, Hookbell, Quercer, and a Gnosis. So you just st we still need to be aware, right? But just now, the only thing that we can sort of crack down just now is that Quercer is in the small. He's actually warped us at the station here. But um, he was initially at that, uh, what's called small. So this is sort of what descanning is, right? If, like if we scan over to Tamunta, we should see the, let's go back to normal PvP. You'll see the gate and everything's sort of in range for that. So this is going to be your lifeblood whilst you uh, scan about, look for targets or avoid them. It's super easy. You can sort of see the indicator here, right? And if you go to like, say a 30% angle, you can see like a bit more, like say if we like click over near Chunka, you'll see like everything within 30 degrees of that, if it makes sense. This choir starts going to go for it. How dare he? So we're gonna dock up here before he starts aggressing us. <laughs> Start the yellow boxes, goddammit. We're gonna dock here. And that's pretty much what descanning is. Um, super handy, and that overview will do you well, boys. I'll do you very well. Just uh, just try and get used to it. Okay, now that we've sort of got descanning down, we've got a sweet little overview. We're gonna basically do what we're doing FW4. You're gonna go to this window, you're gonna go to activities, go down to faction warfare. Then we're gonna go to oh god, you're gonna to go to which one is it? Warzone. I think that's like Warzone Control or something. But basically, you want this to pop up. You'll see that Mimitar currently T3. Basically, that means we're sorting the winning just now. You capture systems and you donate LP to them to like basically get a level up. And depending on the amount of systems you have and the level of those systems, you'll basically go up in tier or be down in tier. These tiers basically affect how much LP you'll be getting from capturing plexes. So since we're currently at T3, just now we're getting a 75% bonus to our loyal point gains from capturing plexes. At T2, you'd be getting what's called just standard. At T1, you'd be getting a 50% reduction. But if you go up to T4, you're getting 150 bonus. And a 225% bonus at tier 5. So you can actually make a lot of esque, especially when you're T4, T5 running plexes. Currently, our enemies, the Umbar, are T2. So, but yeah, that's basically like, we really want T3, T4, and of course T5, that's where the good money comes from. But here, we're going to put capture status up. Um, basically, we want to offensive plex to get the most LP. You can defensive plex. 
The difference between offensive and defensive plexing is, you'll see that um, all these red systems, if you go to there and start working down a plex, that's called offensive plexing. Once we go into one of those plexes, we'll have to shoot an NPC to basically get our LP. If we're in like a blue system, um, basically you just chill in the plex and you don't need to kill the NPC because it's friendly, right? Um, ideally, it doesn't really matter really like what enemy system you go to, you'll always get the same LP rates. But if you're in, say, a friendly system that's like low contest and you run it, you won't get much LP for it. Say if we ran like, I don't know, say like um, Arnster here that's only 10% contested, we'll get very little LP here. But if we went to see a, uh, like say Ontorn here that's 92%, we'd almost get about the same amount of LP we're getting from offensive plexing. But I really recommend you doing offensive plexing, right? So I'm just gonna look for just a lower to jumps, right? Lower to jumps. We're gonna go somewhere close. We could go to Llama or we could go to Sasala, right? Sasala is actually quite an active system and we're not really looking for PvP at the moment. We're just looking for LP. So Tesvi, Anka, Usanin, maybe uh, Llama. These are the kind of systems we want to go to. I'm gonna go to Llama and we're gonna start running some plexes. Okay, so now that we're in Llama, like, we have no idea where the plexes are, right? So what we need is this. Probe Scanner. I'm going to take it off of this map. So if you just, um, what's called, open a separate window here. We don't really need this. So we're going to do this. We're going to put the scan here. We're going to move this down a little bit. Like so. Crack this down like here. And then we're going to crack this up here. So uh, make it a bit more neater, boys. Look fantastic. Okay, so you see that there's um, a different host of plexes, right? Um, let's move this over just so you can see them better. But um, you got large, novice, medium, small. Small's really what we're concerned for. I'm going to work to there at 70. Um, it used to be that you had to go to 10 kilometers of these plexes to slide into them. But now you can warp to any distance and activate gate. I recommend warping to 70 to 100 these days. Um, just in case there's an enemy on the plex and that can catch you, right? If people are uh, camping these plexes, they're usually close to the, the slide in. So if you work to 70 100, you should be fine. Some people might still catch you, but you see that uh, in local currently, we have no one, it's just ourselves. So once you get on the plex, you're just going to activate the gate. You can do right click, um, activate gate, but I recommend you do this. You just hold and you just uh, drag up, right? And then it'll activate the gate. And then you'll go into the plex. Like it's quite, uh, it's quite handy, this little scroll bar thing. If you just like right click on something and just hold. So just like right click and drag up and then just uh, let go and you'll go into the plex. This is basically what plexing is. I'd like to say it's super interesting and exciting, but it's not. <laughs> it's really an activity. You need to sort of be aware of local, but you can do like other activities like watch your Netflix and stuff whilst you do it. I know, I know. But what we're going to basically do is activate MWD, and guns and just kill this NPC and basically work down the timer. That's really what we're here for. Um, I believe it's 15 minutes on a small, but we should be able to kill this NPC. It's probably worth also um, grabbing the loot from this guy. It'll take a little bit of time to get through him. Um, but once we get a bit of LP, a bit of esque flowing, we're going to, uh, what's called, upgrade the T2 projectiles and use hail. These NPCs will die a lot quicker. But for now, this is good. You'll see that... Um, you can see the timer just now if I go here, show all brackets, you'll see now that it has 14 minutes to work down this plex and then we'll get the LP at the end of it. So I will be back uh, once we get, oh also it's worth um, maybe looting these right? Like the tags from these small rats are actually worth like you know 400,000 desk, which is pretty nice. So they add up, you'll probably kill about 5 to 6 NPCs in this and definitely add up so it's worth collecting those. So yes, I'll be back once we capture our plex. This is also something to watch out for. Since we're at 1 AU, there might be stuff in range of this plex, like I'm um, saying, asteroid field or stuff. If you want to know for certain that the, the, the algos is outside, you're going to uh, scroll and then um, do 0 0.1. And if we scan, you see the algos is there. So he's outside the plex. Unfortunately, we don't want to fight the algos. So I'm going to line out to the station here. I'm just going to see if the algos will come in. You'll probably see this neutral goes suspect. If he's um, coming in, because once a uh, neutral comes into one of these plex, he goes suspect. So I'm going to wait and see if he comes inside. Hopefully he doesn't. If we continue with this plex, you see he's gone suspect. So he's on his way. I'm currently aligned to the station here, so I'm in no real trouble here. I can warp out. I'm just, yeah, Dalgos is coming inside. So we're going to warp off, because unfortunately we can't fight him. If we had better skills and a better fit, we could totally go for that. 
Um, but in this fit, I wouldn't really recommend it. We're only really here for the LP at the moment. So thankfully, we were able to complete this small. Shortly, I got very unlucky and people kept on chasing me out the plexus. So you can see I have a lot of tags here. Those tags were from another plex I also got rad out of. So we have plenty of tags here, which isn't too bad. We need to actually sell them for some liquid disc. We also get an LP here shortly, which you'll be able to find if you click on the C. And then it should pop up soon. Come on, please. You have a Conquered uh, site for the Mimitar. Fantastic. We'll just look at this, and it should sort of tell you how much you've got here. If I go to here, if it would do its thing, please. Use it kindly. Pop up. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be popping up for whatever reason, but you got about 30,625 loyal points here, which is about. From the rates that we probably get just now, LP to S, that's about 25 mil. So every 15 minutes, we get about 25 million esk. Once we convert all our stuff, also with all the loot we're getting, these tags from the smalls are worth quite a bit. So we're getting a good little bit of esk. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. I know it's popping up now, but I'll show you. You have, um, in recognition of your efforts to capture an enemy site in lava for the glorious tribal Republic. Liberation Force grants you 30,625 loyal points. So for every small at tier 3, we get about 30,000, which is pretty nice. So um, I'll capture a couple more of these plexes, and then I will show you how to confer your LP and how to safely uh, like cargo it to places to where you want to sell it. So yes. Alright guys, now that our newly made character is in heck, what we're going to do is we're going to contract that reef that we kept from the previous tutorials and give that to our uh, new character. Um, you could have actually sold this previously and then done the tutorial again for another reef in your new character But I didn't want to go through the time of doing running that tutorial. So I decided to keep it I'm going to create the contract to our new character make that private item exchange Crack out the name of your new character Mine says mushroom alpha do this do this do these and finish and sweet So this will be contracted to our new character and we'll pick that up. Um, we're also going to contract the tags and the, like the loot and stuff we got from the NPCs we killed in the smalls because we need that liquid esk uh, to convert the LP. You always need esk and LP to basically buy the items from the LP store and we're going to sell them for like a tidy little profit, um, which is nice. You also see that I'm in uh, high sec with my uh, FW character and I sort of said not to do this. It's sort of okay if you're doing like one jump out of low sec, right? It only becomes an issue if you go to like main trade tops like heck. Renz, Jida, Amar, these kind of things in very high traveled routes. If you go like one jump out from Loseg, like Osigar here, which is one jump out from Amamaki, or you can maybe go to, I think it's like Chunka. Uh, there's like a bunch of places around Camela that you can go to that's um, high sec, just out one jump from Loseg that you can drop off your items. And what we're going to do is we're going to contract these to our hauler character who now has a wreath. He's going to come and collect them in the station and bring these to a trade top to sell. Um, we just need to worry about getting ganked. For 26 mil, I don't think we risk getting ganked. Um, like another player shooting us in high sec, losing his ship and then looting our, our ship. But um, if we were about 50 mil or higher, I'd be a bit worried. But for 26 mil, it should be totally fine. Okay, cool. So now we're in heck. I got my industrial character. To go over to where I dropped off the Thrasher and the tags, brought them over to Heck and sold them at a reduced price, right? Like if we bring them to Jida, one of the better trade tops, we got a lot more for them. But my main aim was to get about 12 to 13 mil. And that way, we're going to do basically convert that LP and S into items. I'm going to also show you two very, very valuable websites. These. Um, Eve Marketeer, an LP store return for S Tribal Liberation Fuzzy Works. This is a very, very important site that you'll be get, using a lot for basically sorting out how much LP per S you're getting for your items. You'll see here the Republic Fleet Large Cat Barriers, which I'm going to be focused on today, aren't actually giving us a good return for S here. 701 um, S per LP is actually really bad. You see there's a bunch of other items that are doing much better. I'm um, also go to the first page here. You'll see that these some of these are in red. You also need to be very careful when using this site. Some of the items are being manipulated, and some of them like I'm going to set it to five percent volume high. So like if we do this, you'll see that maybe some of these items, if we just set it to here, you'll see that some of these items have like really good returns for their esk. But you really want that to set high because like these that basically shows that these items sell really quickly, and you're going to basically sell them like quickly. <laughs> but um. 
basically ammo is usually do quite well. They can be a pain to convert into like ISK and stuff for an LP. Um, just because of the amount of actual like regular ammo they need to convert into faction ammo. But you'll see like some here like these like A134 SPL LP is not bad. And you can get higher values if you bring them to Cheetah and then you put up your own uh, what's called sell order. And just put it up at a higher price than what everyone else is selling theirs and it will eventually sell for that price usually you might need to wait for say like a couple of weeks or a month but you'll get a really good return but if you're lazy or impatient like i am you really want to go for something that sells quite well um here like um usually the shield extenders cap uh, boosters are also usually quite good like cap booster 400 there you see you're getting uh, 927 um, S pair LP on your turns, which is actually really nice. But the thing with cap boosters is they have large volume. They're quite easy to convert into cap boosters. Like all you need is regular navy cap uh, for cap booster 400s, and then you can convert them into navy cap booster 400s. Right, you just need some also um, S and LP. So those are also another good choice. That I recommend getting 400s. They're quite uh, good. Na no one uses navy cap booster 25s, 50s, 150s, some 50s. I don't think are that great. 100s. Usually 800 I think are maybe okay, but 400 maybe 800 and these ones the 3200 ones They are used a lot more commonly. I'd recommend maybe those um, The drones are also quite nice for both feet warriors you, again You need to like just regular warriors and some esk and LP to convert into those but um, yeah super valuable um, What's called website? I'm just doing the uh, Republic fleet large cap batteries today. So they're so easy to convert and um, thankfully they're actually being sold, uh, being bought locally for an okayish price. Not as good as Jada price, but they're being sold okay. Um, I'm also going to show you Eve Market here. Here, it's a fantastic site that basically shows you, like, say if you go to ship equipment, go to the engineering, cap batteries, large cap batteries. I'll put these links down below in the description also, or in just like the bio, or whatever. Just can get access. So this is the thing that we're going to be converting today. We're probably complete large cap batteries. If you click on this, it'll show you the basically the sale orders for like all of Eve, kinda. Like you'll see the ones in Jida, you'll see the ones in Amar, Dodexi, like all these sort of systems, which is super handy, man. So you'll see that they're being sold in the forge for about 28 mil. Um and buy orders are at about 26 and wherever this is <laughs> but in the deck they're going for 25 and heck you see that they're actually selling okay here with the buy orders 24 this isn't a great return for your SPLP, but it's super convenient see these buy orders and heck like for 25 mil we're going to make good use of those you also see in primary they're actually like lower than heck at the moment which is perfect but ideally you want to bring them to uh, cheetah and then set up um what's called basically sell them for 28 mil or you can even put them up like you can see right so if you say like a, a buy order for like 30 mil plus you'll see there isn't too large a quantity in between these and basically he's on you can sort of, i don't know if you can actually see how many sell by using this but usually if you use the end game tool you can see like how many are selling each day like so like volume 6488 sold today 797 the previous day so they actually sell really fast You'll see that, say if you do set them to like 31 mil or potentially 30, you will sell them. It'll just take a bit of time, right? So you can get better returns by doing this with all the other items. But since I'm super lazy, we're going to be selling them locally for the price in heck, which is 25 mil. So these two sites are very valuable. Um, they, again, they fluctuate, right? They're like the market. They're always going to fluctuate the, uh, the S pair LP rates. So yes, let's uh, get these off and I'll show you us converting some of the LP into items. I also needed uh, to use my hauler alt to bring large cat batteries from the system. As you'll see, there's none in this actual station that we're going to use to convert our LP. You need to go to a tribal liberation force like station to convert your LP. So I needed to use the hauler alt to bring some of the, these cat batteries to this station. So you'll see once we convert why we need this. So we're going to only say you can sort of see like what's here but you want to do basically show affordable only for now let's go to where large cat berries are you'll see that we just um or s like we only have like 12 mil so we're just in the cusp after buying the large cat batteries and stuff this is what we want so it's going to cost us twenty thousand loyalty points and 10 mil l uh esque so we're going to buy one of those fantastic 
So that's used up most of our escort now, but I'm going to sell that just like this. We get 23 mil back. Sweet. And I'm going to do that a couple more times. I should be able to buy two this time. Yeah, that'll take 40,000 loyal points. 20 th yep, 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 yep. And so it's locally. Again, you can bring these to Jita and sell them there. I'm um, using like maybe your hauler all. Oh, again, only bring a couple of these at one time. So if you, like, I'd only recommend taking two of these at once in your reef. Tank it up a bit and um, take them to G-Dub maybe if you wish. Or you can sell them locally like this. Or set up a hauler contract. I'll show you a channel that's good for doing this. But um, yeah, we're going to continue selling these. I'm just curious to see how much we get at the end of this. Okay, so 53. How much? Okay, so we can buy. Let me buy like an hour for these. Fantastic. You'll see that um the buy orders here are re uh, like um for the full like like I can sell them in a station and I'm still getting good like returns, right? So sell an R for these. Nice. So we're making pretty decent esc here. How much LP do we have left? About a hundred. How many cap batteries? We only have three cap batteries left, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a bit of a, a nuisance, but um Da, da, da. Buy another three of these at least. You can sort of see that we're making really good esc here. Uh, not as good as what we should really be doing if we're doing this properly, but since we're lazy, we're making okay returns here. We're going to sell the rest of these, make sure that I'm still getting good prices. See, now it's like all the good buy orders are gone or the next system. So, what I'd really want to do is just, like give this to my reef guy and then take them over to the next station and sell them there because he isn't buying them from the station. So, if I just bring them to there and then sell them, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my reef. Um, take the rest of these cat batteries, take some cat batteries here, convert them, and bring them to that station. Which is just in the same system, and sell them there. I don't want to move them on our FW character, because you could potentially... There could be insta lockers on the other side of this uh, station. You'll see that we actually left our Thrasher in Otaran, I believe, and we're just in a pod at the moment. So it doesn't really matter if we're losing our pod, just because we have no implants at the moment. And even if we're on dog, we shouldn't be lockable. It's like pods warp incredibly quickly so you see in that little time that we use there we have a hundred uh, mil and uh how much lp do we have left uh, a couple like uh we can sell these two and we've got enough for another how many caparies a few <laughs> is it 20 i think we've got enough for another two cat batteries. so you'll see we'll probably get like we'll probably sitting about 150 mil which is pretty sweet man like for a 30 and Eve, you know, we got a Thrasher, we've done some Plexing, we got some decent esc, right? After we sell all these, I'll put up, I'll like, um, I'll show you how much we made afterwards. So yeah, this is sort of the premise of making esc by yourself in FW. Again, Fuzzy Works, Fuzzy Works, Tribal Liberation Force LP, and the Eve Marketeer are going to be your best friend, mate. You'll see, like, if, it works for anything, right? Like, if you want to see, like, ship prices, go to, like, an battleship, say, like, we standard. Mimitar. Let's go for our Maelstrom. You'll see the, like, basically prices for all of Eve. So, it's super ha handy to, like, um, what's it called? Compare. So, you'll see, like, especially being in Mimitar right now, don't... Renz is incredibly bad. <laughs> so, like, don't go to Renz saying, oh, this is probably a good price. Use this tool to basically see the prices around the the solar system just to make sure you're saving yourself a buck right you basically want to always be shopping at jita or amar um and trying to avoid heck and rents i know we're doing a lot of our sort of transactions here in heck but heck's not an amazing place i'm just being super lazy we could be making a lot more s than we are just now but again it's really how much time you want to put into this this is just sort of showing you guys what you can sort of achieve and what you can do so yes uh yeah Okay, cool. So after we basically sold all our large cat batteries, we have a grand total of 174 mil profit. So that's not bad for a day's work. And since we already have that like good little bit of capital already, it'll make turning our LP into this a lot easier. So you ideally want to try and keep about 100 mil of that and then use the rest to like convert your LP if that makes sense. Um, another thing that we can do, because you don't really need to use your all, like you can use your all in the wreath to bring your items up to Jita, but that is dangerous. Especially with the amount of LP that you'll soon be converting if you do this quite frequently. And if you get to a higher tier, like say if you're in a faction with tier four or five, you'll be converting a lot more LP. In which case, I actually recommend, like do the calculations yourself, but draw, uh, basically do a hauler's contract. There's push X and there's red frog, I believe, but I'm gonna recommend this channel. You should join this channel. 
If you go to chat channels and then type in haulers channel. There we are. And then basically you'll make a contract in here, crack it in there, set it to the Jida main trade up. You can find this, I'll put it down below what the main Jida trade up is, I don't know off by heart. I know it's like one of the four four stations, there's a lot of stations in Jida, but basically contract all your LP bot items here to the main trade hub in Jida. And then basically you place your hauler all in Jida and sell them, right? You can put them on like say, it's called sale orders for a higher price, like 30 mil and just sort of babysit them. So you can get a bit more return for your S, right? That's something you can do in Jida, which you don't have the luxury of down here in Heck. Um, so yeah, but you just need to make sure that you're actually getting a return on your S, right? So if you're paying too much for your contract up to Jida, um, you're basically be hurting yourself, right? So you need to do the calculation yourself, make sure you're actually making money, ship them up to Jita through a horse contract. You're asking the horse contract what you think is, like what would be suitable for this particular contract, so it differs. Just always make sure to set the collateral of your courier contract higher than the total value of your items, right? So that means that if along the way to Jita, um, the hauler that's bringing them gets ganked, you basically get the collateral back, right? Um, so yeah, you basically don't have anything to lose at that point if they are hauling your own stuff. You just need to make sure it's enticing enough for the people to actually like take it. If it's a small enough contract and you're offering a fair amount, most people will take it. Like uh, smaller contracts, people tend to be quite keen for. So that's something you can definitely do, but if you say if you only have like a couple of large helix senders or cat batteries or say like Tank your wreath, and, um, if it's under about 50 mil, I think you'll be fine. But even then, I'd still be a bit cautious. <laughs> um, if you're an Omega, and you're not an Alpha, you can look into uh, MWD Cloak uh, Warp trick, which is something you can do to be a bit more safe when traveling through high sec and even low sec. I'll also put another link down below to a YouTube video sort of showing you how to do the MWD Warp trick. Unfortunately, you need to be Omega to actually fit a cloak. And can't do it in an alpha character. So you really need to tank your reef a little bit. Try and get your reef to about 25k. Get some large shield extenders on there. A couple of adaptives. You should be pretty like pretty sweet man. But again don't go over 50 mil boys. Because then you risk getting ganked. And I don't want you losing your stuff. So yeah like holler contract. Or use your own reef to get your stuff up to Jita. Or you can be lazy and see if there's any good prices locally. And sell them locally. But just know they probably sell a lot slower locally boys. Okay, now we're going to get into FW Mechanics, and this is a wonderful website to sort of describe what's going on in Faction Warfare and stuff. The EVE University Faction Warfare page. I'm going to sort of use this and sort of basically go over what can fit to say novices, like how much S or LP you're getting from completing these, and why we're actually doing FW, and going a bit more into the mechanics of FW. So first things first, novices, they take you 10 minutes, and basically any novice frigates and getting those so like uh, just t1 frigates pirate frigates and faction frigates can get into us novice smalls allow for all the above of course um just regular t1 destroyers command destroyers and assault frigates not tactical destroyers they can fit however into medium as well as t2 destroyers um and uh t2 cruisers sorry you can get strategic cruisers in here but also keep an eye out for mediums because like people tend to um, bait and medium flex and say there'll be like a rifter or assault frigate there that you want to fight you'll go inside the medium and there'll be like a curse or something so the thing of combat recons is they don't appear on d scan so it's a very annoying trick or bait that people do in medium so be careful of taking fights in mediums if you're solo larges allow all of the above of course strategic cruisers battle cruisers and battleships too so super super nice um they're actually recently introduced larges i'm well larges used to be the old opens they've only recently been introduced larges but opens are unrestricted basically anything get until open if it warps to it so you're like you can even warp dreads carriers all these crazy things and open so opens are pretty cool um as for the kind of payouts these are the kind of payouts here i'm just going to basically you know Tier 3 payouts for novice, 17,500. A small, 30,625. Medium and large, 43,750. Same for the large. 
and opens are 50 to 500. And you can also see the rates here, tier 5, which get very nice. But it's more reasonable to sort of go for tier 3 and 4 rates. It's not very often you're at tier 5. When you're at tier 5, though, you're laughing because look at those LP rates. Amazing. So, yeah, that's... um. That's basically kind of what the plexes fit into um, and how much you're rewarded for them. But every time you capture one of these plexes, you basically add 0.7% contest to the system. Or if you're doing one of these um, plexes in one of your own friendly systems, it'll take off 0.7% contest. Um, and basically what you're aiming at FW to do it's a plex up, say when you're on offensive plexing, you want to keep on um, pushing, pushing that system in 0.7% contest for each of those um, plexes you ca capture. And then once it's 100%, the system becomes vulnerable. What that means is that uh, infrastructure hub in that system, basically you're allowed to shoot it at that point. Once you shoot and kill it, um, basically after downtime, the system becomes yours. So that's really why you're capturing these plexes in the first place. Basically, just to make the infrastructure hub vulnerable, you shoot it, and usually a good fight on that eye hub. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much the mechanics of that. There's also some other little nice little details that goes more in depth in infrastructure hubs, like um, what's it called. You need to donate your LP to these to increase the level of the system if you own it and stuff. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this because it's not really necessary for a new player. However, again, if you want to go more in depth. Um, look at this uh, website, uh, EVE University has a wonderful resource and um, this Faction Warfare page is no exception. Now, I probably haven't sold you on the whole FW thing at the moment. I've showed you Plexing, which is relatively dull and boring, but it's good -esque for like doing it solo, basically, and a new player, it's really good income. But this isn't why people stay with FW and generally join. Um, you really want to get yourself in a group do a bit of plex combat and get into solo PvP or small gang. That's where Losec excels, man. The plex combat is so fun. Just cause usually the fleets are kinda small. It's rare that you go past like 30 people in a fleet these days. And um everyone sort of knows each other, there's good banter, and it's nice little like brawls and stuff you can do. It's also very easy to get solo PvP in Losec, just because of the nature of like the plexes, you just like go from system to system these kind of plexes, see what's in there, and you're able to choose sort of what you want to fight. So it's perfect for a new player just to get sort of involved in PvP. I'm not going to go too much into PvP, like fits wise and stuff. I might do a future guide where we do like a sort of PvP guide for new bros, but get yourself into a corp. And these uh, corps I have up here are some that I sort of recommend, some I can't really talk about. Um, Pi Inc's a very Amar RP heavy corp. Um, and Red Sky Morning's also another Mark Corp, but all the local interactions I've had with these guys have been excellent. They all seem like really good guys, and these two I can recommend, um, but not recommend. <laughs> I've never been in, I've never talked to the guys in their comms, but from the local interactions, they seem like good dudes. Now, I can definitely recommend you Yushu Khan, because I used to be in that alliance, and in the Corp, kill them all, let Bob sort them out. Fantastic lads in that Corp, and it's a high recommend from me. I also have two other corps there. We have Mackie's Raiders, which is, like, again, I haven't, I've haven't i interacted with the players, but I haven't been in that corp. They're a USTZ gang, um, so if you're more US, that might suit you better. And then you have my corp, Thuckers. I've only been going for about a month. I'm very new to the whole FCing slash FW thing. Not new to FW in a way. I've always been in low sec and kind of in and out of FW, but I've always been sort of solo. It's only recently that I've done sort of corp small gang slash fleet kind of thing so if you're interested in what i have to offer uh thuckers is always going to be recruiting man and if like happy to take new bros a lot of these corps are happy to take new bros i know especially kill them all myself and i believe mackies are as well um red sky i think do too i'm not too certain on pie inc i don't know if they have uh, sp um, requirements and stuff but they do have the requirement uh that you basically you know only fly a marships these kind of things so they're super heavy and then more roleplay. You also see that um that blue text in each of these um corps, right? You'll see like um Voices UK, Red Sky Morning Public, Key EA Pub, Mackie's um Pie Public, you know, these kind of things. They are public channels. So say if you type them into that chat channel like we did for the overview and the Hollers channel, 
Um, that gets you into their public channel. You can ask questions there, see if you want to get involved, see what they're about. Um, you can get yourself involved, boys, and that's really what we want. I'm also going to show you um, how to access the Fleet Finder. Um, unfortunately, there's no fleets up at the moment just now, but usually uh, prime time there is. You can join one of those, get involved, get in comms, talk with the boys, get to hopefully a little bit of Plex fighting, which is super fun. I recommend you do. If you constantly just Plex and FW, you're going to lose your mind. <laughs> I mean, it is nice, you know, you can put on some Netflix or Twitch whilst you do it, um, start keeping an eye on D-Scan, or whilst you wait for a fight to come your way. But it can get a bit monotonous, so you really want to get yourself into a corp, get yourself in comms, and uh, get a good group to fly with, you know, just um, shop about, see what suits you, and um, yeah. Okay, before we end things, I'm just going to show you some things that will make it easier for you when joining a fleet. Um, so you've joined a fleet, you went to the Fleet Finder, you've joined, now what you're going to do is, if you don't already have this window up, you're going to go down Social, Fleet, and you want this window open, okay? Um, I also need Form Fleet myself, one sec. Form Fleet, there we are. And then you should have this, right? You'll have My Fleet and History. History is very important, because this is where you can see the FC doing broadcasts. This is where you're going to need to broadcast for reps. If you um, Say if you have like a shield reps or armor reps in your fleet, you're going to use these two. You have uh, broadcast need shield, broadcast need armor. So say if you're an armor fleet and you start taking damage, you want to broadcast need uh, need armor. It'll broadcast up here for the logic to click on and um, basically rip you. <laughs> and of course for shield rips. Now you'll also see sometimes this, right? I'm going to broadcast the gate here. This will most likely be another target. But since I broadcast that, the FC will probably be shouting a uh, primary is just for now. It'll be like. Primary Giltratron, you'll shoot that, and then secondary, they'll broadcast another target. You can unlock that up and up your secondary. Um, but for now, you'd be targeting a uh, quick way to target stuff is control, and then you can click. Right? So you can also uh, control, like I'm going to un uh, unlock this. You can control, click from this, and you'll start locking it. So that's super easy to like fall broadcast that way. You can just control, click from the broadcast window. So these are some good little things that help you in fleet combat. Again, these are your broadcast thingies. There's some other ones like need capacitor and like I've spotted an enemy, but you would really need these two and maybe occasionally need capacitor when in bigger fleets. So yeah boys, that's basically this guide come to a close. I'm going to quickly mention another good third party website called Z Killboard. Um, if you ever happen to start doing PvP, you die to someone or basically you want to know what you're up against it's worth going into sea Kelboard, type in the pilot's name and you can get good fits off them see roughly what they're trying to fly or maybe be able to figure out what sort of happened sea is a very wonderful tool to use um but yeah uh that's the pretty much the last part part tool that i'd sort of recommend you thank you so much for uh, watching my video our guide um i do hope it helped you if you're a new player and you still have questions to be answered or asked Please message me in game. My main's name's Blight's Rich. Um, I'll put a little like title up there. Just um, feel free to type in that name and send me a message if you have any other questions that I haven't answered in this guide. I hope I've answered the majority of them. I think I've covered everything. I probably missed something. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully I wish you good, great luck in your FW career, whether you join Yamar or Mimitar. Um, it doesn't affect me too much. It'd be cool if you join Mimitar because I'll be able to fly for you but if you join the Mar you get to shoot you which is also fantastic so choose whichever you prefer or if you end up going to Kaldari or Galanti sorry I don't have any corpse to really recommend from that side I've done very little PvP or things up in that war zone so I can have I don't have a clue what corpse to recommend you if you're a Kaldari or a Galanti pilot feel free to put your corp down below in the description like maybe if people are interested in joining those guys or maybe some corps down there in the description for you but yes i'm gonna stop mumbling boys thanks so much for watching the guide hopefully done you well take care guys